It's a pleasure to be here. And as Mats kindly introduced the topic, I would like to talk to you about the case for abundance. High, sustainable, equitable, non-inflationary, stable growth and prosperity for all are possible. But why hasn't that been delivered so far? Let's look at that. Now, um, since the late 1920s, actually, economists have become increasingly optimistic because there were economists that realized, well, hang on, we can create a lot of prosperity for everyone. It is possible. So this knowledge started to, um, to become um, more widely known. Uh, John Maynard Keynes, in 1928, gave a lecture, um, Possibilities for Our Grandchildren, in which he calculated what's going to happen in the coming century. Now, we're almost there. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost now 100 years later, so we can take stock of his uh, predictions. He looked at productivity in the previous decades Good. and extrapolated. Okay, there could be some shocks and events. But if this continues for a century in a certain range, uh, this will generate vast per capita income and prosperity, so much so that people won't have to work anymore. Literally, he spent most of the second half of his lecture and essay on, on this topic. Well, how, how are we going to handle this? Because the data is very clear. We don't have to work anymore. Maybe just a few hours per week, per person. Um, and he was so convinced of that, because, because the, the data, data was, was very clear, clear that, that he then um, spent time, time thinking, thinking about how to stay sane. sane. You, know, you know, we should, should have, have still some kind of regular, regular um, you know, lifestyle. And, and how, how can, can we, we do that? that? Well, maybe, maybe people, people should, should voluntarily work for maybe, you know, two days a week for, you know, a few hours. So there is some kind of schedule. That sort of thing. So just to illustrate how convinced he was that his prediction was correct. What's happening? A hundred years later, um, well, we're still working, aren't we? Most of us have to work. And when you look at his calculation, he was actually correct in the productivity growth calculations and income growth calculations. Um, but we still have to work. Why is that? And the answer is... The wealth has been generated, exactly as he predicted. In fact, it's the upper end of the range that he used in his calculations, which is quite astonishing, really, if you think about it. So it, it, it would have been possible by now that we, none of us has to work. But it's not happening because of the way this prosperity has been distributed. And that's been so extreme that Keynes could not fathom that it would be like this that a tiny, tiny group of people, of course, they don't have to work, okay? Probably already in the days of Keynes didn't work. Um, but they would continue to reap all those benefits, all this abundance and prosperity, and prevent others from sharing in this. That was, this inequality was so extreme in the distribution of this ongoing growth and prosperity um, that that's where his final conclusion was wrong. And, and we still have to work. Now, then Second World War hit, and economists, of course, that was a bit of a setback, but in the, in the 50s and 60s, growth was, was pretty good, and optimism returned, and economists started to predict again, we can solve all those problems um, in, in the world. Um, and you can ask, I mean, the optimism of the 50s and 60s, was that perhaps overdone? With hindsight, many people feel this was overdone. We shouldn't have been so optimistic. Was it reasonable to be so optimistic? Well, I think it was. Um, I agree here with uh, JFK who said that our problems are man-made. Therefore, they may be solved by man. A man can be as big as he wants. No problem of human destiny is beyond human beings. So 
the economists were right when they were optimistic. Still, today the consensus is, no, no, we can't have so much prosperity. There are limits. Limits to growth, limits to prosperity, limits to abundance. And we hear a lot about those limits, uh, planetary limits. Well, a lot of it is due to the shock that happened in the 70s. And that's one we should think about briefly because it's very relevant uh, for today. It's the same shock we're experiencing today. So this... Um, the 70s um, decade set everyone back. And what happened is that we had high inflation and stagnation, stagflation. Um, if you look at the US in 1974, um, consumer prices jumped by 11%. And then in 1980, 13.5%. These were the peaks in inflation in, the, in that decade. Um, look at some other countries. In some other countries, it was even worse. In Japan, 23% inflation in 1974. In the UK, 24% inflation. Um, some countries got away um, a bit better. Sweden, 137 Germany, only 7%. In fact, that, this range should already tell you, well, hang on, what's really happening here? What is the real cause of this? Of course, you know, the official story is we had an oil shock. And this, this is a, an article from just um, from this year, just from, um, from March. It was the oil price shock, which itself was triggered by a war. Remember, that's the official story, a Middle Eastern war resulting in the OPEC organization cartel to embargo oil exports to the US and Western countries which happened in October 73. And, and, and of course, this is very similar to what's now going on, a war, an oil, gas, um, fossil fuel um, supply shock, embargo, sanctions, um, producing an energy supply shock, driving up energy prices. And in those days, so in September 73, we had $3 per barrel, up to $12 per barrel uh, in 74. So quadrupling the price. And that's the shock, we're told. This um, energy supply shock unleashed, ramp unleashed rampant inflation and a worldwide recession is what economists have been saying ever since, even just um, in March this year. But is this really true? That's what we need to examine. Uh, the ECP said uh, in, in their review, soon after they were created, oh, this type of oil price shock can never happen again, and now we're really properly prepared. Well, that's already um, been proven wrong. Perhaps their entire analysis uh, can be proven wrong. So we've been told that this, these high aspirations for abundance and prosperity for all um, you know, they can't happen because of energy supply shocks, uh, resource limits, resource constraints, uh, planetary constraints. But is this really true? And we've got to go back to this 1970s inflation to answer that question. 